check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. What's up? What's down? What is going on around? I'm Paulo Li Sing, founder of StartupInTaiwan.com. This show is to answer your questions about starting up in Taiwan, either for business, school, or just hanging around. So leave your questions in the comments section below. Our guest for today is Mark Pimentel from the U.S. Mark Pimentel is a high-frequency quant quantitative trader and entrepreneur who moved to Taipei in 2018 after more than a decade of experience in New York and Chicago. Pimentel is a co-founder uh, co of Kronos Research, a multi-strategy cryptocurrency trading firm with about 140 employees across three offices in Asia and trades five to 10 billion US dollars in daily volume. He is also building Wu Network, a cryptocurrency dark pool with deep liquidity and token-based incentive schemes. Their goal is to build digital assets, trading infrastructure, and improve market execution. Our topic for today is something I am not familiar with. That's why I was like having some difficulty mentioning the words, but it has a great following here in Taiwan, which is cryptocurrency. Mark, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Paulo. Thank you for the invitation. Really happy to talk to you. Sure. Uh, first question, uh, why Taiwan? Why did you move here? Oh, I think, I think Taiwan is just a really good place to live. My, um, my wife is actually a Taiwanese American. And so, you know, one of the main reasons is we wanted to come back and spend time with her family, um, see her friends here. And, and I visited Taiwan a few times. Um, and I just really like the culture here. I like the people here. I just like, uh, just like living here. And we wanted our kids to learn Mandarin. And so they've, um, I think they've adjusted very well. From a, from a business side, I think that there are a lot of advantages to being in Taiwan. Uh, there's really good technical talent here. And we've been able to just hire a really strong team, um, even though we've only been here a few short years. So, you know, I think I just a testament to the, um, to the people here in Taiwan that we've been able to, to build such a thriving company here. Sure. Um, could you tell us more about your companies? Uh, you have Kronos and then Wu Network. Uh, how do these two companies uh, work together? Right. So we are essentially two different entities. And actually, we have a variety of different entities around the, around the globe. Um, our purpose in, in Taiwan is more on the software, on the research side. So uh, Kronos, uh, Kronos Research is all about developing trading, trading software, trading technologies, um, being able to predict how markets move is really important for us because when, um, when, we do, when we do any type of trading, we need to be able to uh, make bets on if the market is going to go up or if the market's going to go down. So we have very sophisticated algorithms. Uh, we mine large amounts of data to try to determine uh, if we should be betting one way or another way. Uh, Woo Network is uh, an extension of that. Um, essentially, we, we want to give... Uh, the same types of trading benefits to our to our customers, um, and we do that by creating a platform such that people can can trade uh, can trade cryptocurrency, and uh, Wu Network will send those orders to Kronos for execution, um, and Kronos can can trade in a way that uh, the Wu Trade uh, Wu Network uh, customers don't necessarily need to pay fees to to us as an exchange in order to trade um, because Kronos can can make money by trading against that order flow in a way that's mutually beneficial to both Kronos and to uh, Wu Network and its customers. Um, so did it should you... be a big shift. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, did you move to Taiwan to set up these companies? Well, uh, I guess technically we started um, while we were abroad. So we started the companies in 2018. Uh, for the first two or three months, I was living in Chicago. Um, and then my co-founder, Jack, was in between Taiwan um, as well as other countries. Um, initially, we spent a lot of time traveling in Asia, trying to understand just how cryptocurrency works, how the ecosystem works. So we spent a lot of time traveling in China, Japan, Korea, Singapore, um, and we kind of built the company on the road, uh, I guess. What, 
It looks like uh, Taiwan is uh, Taiwan has uh, the majority of your uh, employees. Uh, why Taiwan in this context? I know you mentioned about uh, talent earlier. Are, are there any yeah. other factors that you consider why Taiwan? Uh, I think geographical proximity is really important. So as I mentioned, we spend a lot of time working with people all around Asia, and Taiwan is just very centrally located. So it's, it's close to close to China on the north, close to Korea, Japan, close to Singapore in the south. So it's just a really good, uh, really good base. Um, my partner, I have a co-founder named Jack, and he actually spends a lot of time traveling, um, and he's in Eastern Europe now. So we're setting up an office in an entity there wow. in, uh, in Poland, Warsaw. Wow, so really congrats. looking to expand internationally. Um, but, oh, congrats you know, for I, that. I, oh yeah, thank you. But you know, I continue to live in, in Taiwan, and so, uh, naturally, I, I, I've been kind of building the office here and working with the team here while uh, we expand internationally as well. So, you know, we, in many ways, we got started in Taiwan, but we, uh, we really have a very global focus to our business. Yeah, um, as I mentioned in my intro, I'm not highly knowledgeable in this topic. Could you describe what professional cryptocurrency trading is? Sure. So my background is actually in technology and engineering. I went to school for computer engineering at Carnegie Mellon University in the U.S. Um, and I've, uh, over the years, I've learned all about high frequency trading, which is uh, trading in very sh short time scales. So we tend to look at the 30 second to two minute time window when we make a prediction. So in this way, our trading is, is actually not the same type of trading that and most people would, you know, would associate with, uh, you know, like for instance, with, with Wall Street and, um, you know, discretionary trading. We, we actually do fully automated research-based trading. A lot of what we do is, is just writing code and developing software uh, that, that tries to understand how the market will work. Uh, and trading is actually a very, very small part of it. So um, you started your career, as you mentioned, in uh, trading at traditional markets, stocks, futures. So why crypto? What, what's, what's interesting about it? I just, I just think crypto is so exciting. Crypto moves at such a rapid pace. Uh, I've been in cryptocurrency now for about three, three years or so, and it's just changed so much in the last few years, and it just continues to, continues to change. I think the one of the most exciting parts about crypto is that it's immediately a global asset class um, and it trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you're interacting with people all around the world and you're doing it constantly. Like it never stops. And so, um, you know, for the, for the people here, for myself, it's, um, it's, it's a constant roller coaster and it's, it's one where it can be difficult to sleep at times, but you know, I really, I really enjoy it. I really love it. I really, uh, I just, I don't think I could imagine my life not trading, you know, not watching the markets and not looking at data and not, uh, not trying to participate in this, uh, in this ecosystem, this asset class. Well, um, yeah, I actually, um, I, that's actually my next question. For the traditional trading, there are some basic indicators to look at, such as the uh, company performance, economic conditions, uh, the fundamentals. How about for crypto um, trading? I know that th this could be a little bit difficult uh, to to estimate because the, the value is different in other platforms uh, for any type of product, for example. Right. So looking at fundamentals for crypto is a lot harder um, because the... The, the assets that you're trading, the crypto tokens, they, they, um, they represent different things. Um, in many cases, they represent concepts that are not as, uh, not as well formulated as, as say an equity, uh, an equity interest in a company would be. And so how do you, how you value that is, is, uh, is difficult. Uh, when we, when we trade in a high frequency style, we tend to look at uh, primarily short-term indicators, which are actually based on things like, um, like short-term economics, so short-term supply and demand. Uh, we look at short-term uh, game theory or psychology-based uh, indicators. Um, people, people, trading, people trading cryptocurrency 
or people trading the traditional markets still behave in similar ways in terms of and how they in terms of how they respond to events. Um, so a lot of our trading is based on, for instance, how people react, whether they're overreacting to something or underreacting to something else. Um, so you know these are these are quite universal concepts. Uh, let me. Um pull this uh, question back to uh, to Taiwan. How do you think uh, yeah. Taiwan can well position itself in the cryptocurrency market? Strengths and weaknesses or areas to improve? The uh, cryptocurrency entrepreneurs, cryptocurrency traders and technologists, they actually have a lot of freedom in, in you know, where to go and how to operate. Uh, a lot of them will and kind of scour the, the world for the friendliest jurisdictions to operate in, uh, whether it's for uh, you know, tax treatments of, of crypto or regulations on, on taking crypto assets into custody or um, regulations around customers um, and transparency of uh, source of funds um, or, or how, um, how easily money can, or, money can move between fiat and crypto. Uh, I think Taiwan is, is relatively um, relatively neutral and rel uh, more on the friendly side, I, I, would, I would say, compared to a lot of other uh, jurisdictions. Um, they, uh, the Taiwan legislators have been coming out with more and more uh, regulations advocating for transparency, particularly around um, know your customer type regulations and anti-money laundering, which, uh, you know, I think we are, we're a big, um, big supporter of. Um, a lot of the, the banks uh, around the world really are, are, very, are very strict about crypto. And so for a lot of the more recent regulations in Taiwan, like our, our, our company, our entities have actually been adhering to them already just because we need to mm -hmm. uh, on a private basis with our banking partners. So. Uh, I think in that way, you know, Taiwan is uh, relatively friendly. Um, I think that, you know, we're always in the position where we want kind of clearer regulations on how to operate um, so that we can figure out how, you know, how to do the, the business that we want to do in the most legally compliant way. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I, I see it is that you're seeing Taiwan not only for the pool of talents that it has, but also the fairly uh, the the regulations that help uh, companies uh, in the cryptocurrency uh, grow faster. It, are those the factors why Taiwan could play an important role? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I think the I mean the primary motivation for us is still the, the talent pool here because we're we're really looking for for strong talent across whether it's engineering, whether it's research, whether it's uh, business development, marketing, legal, we, we have such a, uh, such a strong demand for, for growth uh, internationally that, we, that we, we, we need to build offices and places that, you know, that have that talent pool, that have, um, you know, that have the individuals that, that, that can contribute and I think more importantly want to contribute. Uh, and I think that one of the big factors in Taiwan is that we have been able to to find a, a lot of great individuals that, that are really interested in crypto, um, that are very open-minded to new technologies, uh, open-minded to new, uh, developing new businesses and, and really innovating. Um, we've uh, kind of rebranded our, our uh, kind of global identity into Kronos Research. Uh, okay. The research aspect is, is really important for me because we want to encourage innovation. We want to encourage experimentation. Uh, we want you know, people that are, they're not afraid to try new things and to, um, and, to, and to really push the boundary in terms of what you know, we can, can give to, to give to customers and deliver it to our partners. Uh, so let's, let's move to uh, your life as a foreigner here in Taiwan. In general, how do you think Taiwan can improve the lives of foreigners here? Uh, I think my, my life here has been, has been pretty good. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed living here. The, the language barrier for me has been has been, has been difficult. Um, although, admittedly, it's helped that my, my wife is uh, Taiwanese American, so uh, you know she has helped me a lot in setting up the um, company. Um, we also have family here, so uh, like my father-in-law has helped a lot in setting up the company. He 
some money in the company in the, in the beginning as well. And so, um, you know, we've been fortunate that we've had some, some local help, which um, other entrepreneurs might not have, uh, might not have the same type of benefits. Um, but I think in general, people are, are, are very friendly. Um, we've, um, you know, one thing that we did early on was, was, um, was hire um, people to help us with some of the, you know, getting around some of the local regulations, getting around, for instance, trying to figure out how to get uh, visas from, for, for myself and my, my co-founder. Um, it's just a difficult process uh, initially, it's getting started. Uh, but, you know, now we're, I think now we're fully set up and everything. And, um, uh, it, it just took some time, it's just a process. Uh, I think hiring people was also difficult um, initially. Uh, Particularly because we came from the from the U.S., you know, we don't we didn't know the, the school system here. We didn't, we didn't know what, you know, when we see people's resumes, we don't we couldn't tell one school from another school, um, and so that was just a just a process to get through. But you know, I think it's been uh, you know, really really fortunate that that it's gone so well over the last few years. Well, you've answered my next question, so we'll move on to the next. Uh, part which is a fast round so you basically just have to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind ready yeah, sure. okay. what is your daily breakfast daily breakfast uh usually egg and purple egg and a toast uh what show are you currently watching on netflix netflix uh, i'm watching impractical jokers just to get some uh, some comedy <laughs> all right uh are you a morning or night person um, I, I guess I'm a bit of both. I, <laughs> yeah, you woke up early today. So. Yeah, I get up early and I sleep late. So. Uh, and usually and more for night person. Yeah. All right, night person. Oh, Are you Android or iOS person? Uh, iOS. Uh, Mac or PC? Uh, PC. Favorite game or games or board games? Favorite board games. I mostly play board games with my kids these days. So whatever, whatever they're interested. In. Uh, favorite movie of all time? Movie. Uh, I like historical movies. Braveheart's one of my favorite movies. Uh, favorite book? Favorite book. My favorite author is a gentleman, Bernard Cornwell, who writes historical fiction. I love all his books. All right, that's the last part. Um, Mark, thanks for joining us in the show. Finally, how can we help you in our show? What's your action item? Action item, well, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're fortunate that our company continues to grow. So I think if you're interested in, in uh, crypto, if you're interested in uh, markets and trading, research and building you know, exchange, building a trading platform, we'd definitely love to to talk with you um, and in the past we've been focused on growing in Taiwan but actually now we're growing all over the all over the world so we're kind of open to the talent everywhere and we're, we're yeah so we we have we have a lot of like sorry uh, we have a lot of like audience from abroad as well who are thinking of moving to Taiwan either to start their own business or to find work here and I guess you uh, telling us that you have job openings here could potentially lure some of the foreign talents in the cryptocurrency uh, space to come to Taiwan and see if they could work for you. So that's the last question uh, for us. Uh, again, thank you, Mark, for uh, joining our show. And for our audience, uh, please uh, spread the word about what we do here. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done, uh, done it yet. So have a great day. Fantastic. Thank you, Paula. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.